The Jupyter ecosystem has a bunch of APIs, tools, and programs that you can use to build your own apps. Most of them are free, open source, and pretty easy to use. I'm going to show you what these are, give you a few ideas on what you can build with them, and show you the best way to get started. There's three main categories. You've got the Jupyter APIs, the Jupyter programs, and the Jupyter dev products. We'll start with the APIs. The APIs are everything that you can see on the Jupyter app itself available to you as an endpoint. For instance, if you want to add swaps to your app, you can do that with the swap API. This lets you convert any two tokens that are supported on Jupyter. If you're running an online store or if you're taking payments, the payments API is great because it lets you take in any token as a payment and convert that into USDC. So you could be running a meme coin merch store and you could take payment in specific meme coins and get paid out in USDC. The flash fill endpoint is a way for Solana program developers to integrate swaps into their programs. So if you have a Solana program and you want to do swaps within that program, you can do that with the flash fill endpoint. The CPI is also similar. So if you're not a Solana program developer, you can pretty much ignore these. The limit order and DCA endpoints are exactly what the limit order and DCA function in the app are. So if you want to programmatically be able to set limit orders or DCA orders, you can do that. The perp endpoint, which is not yet released, is a way to set uh, perpetual orders programmatically. Now let's talk about a few things you can build. The first and most obvious thing you can do is you can add swaps to your app. This lets you swap tokens for your users. So you can automate the amounts, you can automate the slippage, anything that the user isn't familiar with, or if you don't want the user to have complete control over out what they're getting out. For instance, maybe you're running a game and you want to have the game token converted to dollars, or you want to have USDC converted to game tokens. You can do that programmatically with the swap endpoint. Something I really want to see is a gamified investing app. So you can DCA in automatically, programmatically, you can have people send in money that goes DC8 in and you can give them rewards for consistency. Another thing I'd love to see is a native swap app for Windows or Mac OS. A lot of us are trading tokens on web browsers, which aren't the most performant pieces of software. So just having something snappy and native that's built for the actual operating system itself would be really cool to have. Moving on, let's talk about the Jupyter programs. Not all of Jupyter's programs are open source. So the ones in red, that is the swap program, the limit order program, and the DCA program. These are not open source. However, the governance and referral programs are. The code for them, including the actual addresses for the programs that are deployed on chain is publicly available. That means anyone can access these programs. You can even clone these programs if you want, and you can use them if you don't want to clone your own and deploy your own. You can use the referral program that's already been deployed to make your own affiliate system. So this would be really fun thing to have if you have an app that's got a social element to it, or if you've got an app that you want to add in an affiliate system too, you can do that with the Jupyter's referral program. It's open source. It exists on chain. You don't have to pay for maintenance or deployment. It all is already there. So you can use theirs. Something I would really want to see is a Jupyter DAO alerts program. So the governance program is available uh, on chain. You've got the address for it. And this is something that I'm playing with myself. You can remind users whenever there's a new vote, you can remind them for each wallet even. And anytime there's a reward, available for them. You can check the rewards because you have the code for the governance programs and you can figure out how the rewards work. You can check if they have rewards available and you can alert them. Hey, you've got rewards. So that would be pretty cool to see. Next up, let's talk about the Jupyter dev products. So this is everything the Jupyter team has put out for making our lives, our developers' lives easier. First off, you've got the Jupyter terminal. This is the best way to add Jupyter to your app. It's two to three lines of code. You can do it in five, 10 minutes and all the annoying things are taken care of. So with just a few lines of code, you can have the Jupyter terminal in any way you want. You can have it as a modal, you can have it integrated into your app, or you can have it as a widget. Let's say I want it on this corner of the screen. There we go pops up, you can swap any token you want. Users can't mess this up because this is the actual thing, the actual code that's used for the Jupyter app itself. So none of your funds are at risk. You're not gonna be running into any errors. There's no headaches, no tearing out your hair. Easy peasy in about five to 10 minutes and just about this much amount of code, you can install it or in add it to your app. However, if you do want to white label your swap or you want something very specific that's not covered by the Jupyter terminal, or if you don't want, if you don't even want the terminal's interface, you can use a bunch of the clients that are available. So there's a JavaScript client available with NPM install or bun install, if that's your thing. There's also a Rust API client. So these two are primarily for swaps. And there's also a Unity SDK in case you're building video games or just any games at all. And of course, we've got a React hook. So this is really fun because it takes care of all the edge cases. Again, like I mentioned, it's just one hook for a swap and a coat. 
easy peasy lemon squeezy. If you're doing a lot of swaps, you should know about the self-hosted V6 API. So this is gonna be updated as the versions get updated. But basically what this is, is a way for you to replace Jupyter infrastructure with your own. So regularly when you run an API request, it goes from your app to the Jupyter servers, wherever they are, wherever they're hosted. And then it goes to the Jupyter swap program. This means that you're relying on Jupyter's services and their infrastructure, including you're getting limit hit with the rate limits. So if you're not happy with rate limits or if you just wanna be self-sufficient and you wanna be reliable or you wanna be relying on your own hardware, you can replace this thing on its own, on its entirety with the self-hosted options. And that is available, the code for that, uh, the guidance for that is available. There's also paid services. So people, uh, so providers like Helios and Shift also have these available for you if you don't wanna do all the setup yourself. But just, you should, you should know that this is available for you. Finally, you've got the instruction parser. So Jupyter swap instructions can be a bit complex and it's not always obvious what's going on. So the Jupyter team put out a instruction parser which explains what a Jupyter swap transaction is doing and you can figure it out by putting in the transaction signature. Hey, this is what's being swapped. This is what's going in and out. If you wanna stay up to date with what the Jupyter team is pushing out, follow this Telegram channel. I'll have it linked in the description alongside everything else I've mentioned today that will keep you updated. Now, if you wanna build with Jupyter, you should click this video right over here where I'll show you at three different levels how to build your own Jupyter swap. We'll start with the terminal, makes it really easy, then we'll use the React hook, and finally, I'll abandon the React hook and I will use the API itself to build it completely from scratch. Check it out.